Hi, you are watching the YouTube channel of India's first weekly environmental newspaper, Enviro Annotations. Here are the headlines from our the 17th of May 2023 issue and also from our web portal. The Forest Advisory Committee reviewed the Department of Telecom's request concerning forest clearance. After deliberations the committee recommended that authorization of the user agency for laying optical fiber on existing right-of-way at their own is not tenable in view of the fact that the proposals for laying of optical fiber cable fall under rediversion category and not under change in land use category. It was also noted that the ministry has already implemented various initiatives to simplify processes. These include replacing the lengthy Form A with a simpler Form A and empowering the nodal officer in the state government to grant approval for proposals related to laying optical fiber cable. Deliberating on another important subject, the advisory committee observed that in view of the opinion of the Ministry of Law and Justice and initiatives undertaken by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, the general approvals granted by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change should not be continued further and accordingly, the committee recommended that general approval granted by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change under the Forest Conservation Act, 1980 for construction of public utility projects by government involving area of up to 1 hectare and tree felling up to 50 per hectare may be withdrawn. The meeting was held under the chairmanship of C.P. Goyal, Director General of Forests and Special Secretary. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and climate change has declared the whole of the Union territory of Ladakh as air pollution control area. Jal Jeevan Mission attains 12 crore mark, nearly 62% coverage across the country. Coverage in Lakshadweep is at 0%, and West Bengal 33%, Jharkhand 35%, Rajasthan 38%, and Uttar Pradesh 43% are among the lowest performers. The editorial article, Understanding the Battle Between Good Ozone and Bad Ozone, concludes that understanding the dynamics between good ozone and bad ozone is crucial for safeguarding human health and preserving our environment. While good ozone protects us from harmful UV radiation, bad ozone poses significant risks, leading to poor air quality and health issues. It is our collective responsibility to address this challenge through concerted efforts, including emission reduction measures and the promotion of sustainable practices. By doing so, we can ensure a healthier and safer future for generations to come. Sunita Mishra writes on amendments in emission standards pertaining to particulate matters from industrial boilers, thermic fluid heaters and hot air generators. The article provides a detailed and comprehensive report on emission limits specified by government and the applicability. Uttar Pradesh Minister Influencing National Green Tribunal Order for Exemption of Environmental Compensation from Two Units Amounting 51.92 Crore Rupees. National Green Tribunal headed by Chairperson Justice Adarsh Kumar Goel, slaps 25,000 rupees fine on petitioner for false allegations, law abuse. National Green Tribunal Southern Zone Bench of Justice Kushpa Satyanarayan, Judicial Member and Dr. Satyagopal Korlapati, Expert Member, directed Secretary to Government of Tamil Nadu to constitute a committee of secretaries of higher education and school education along with experts in the field of pollution and public health to suggest distance criteria for locating a new institution in an industrial area or in areas where industries are already located. Expert Appraisal Committee seeks revocation of A for Maharashtra bauxite miner over concealed info, defers Lakhir limestone mines A revalidation. NBWL Standing Committee defers NTPC's request seeking review of January 2015 condition mandating payment of 2% to towards Wildlife Fund. World Migratory Bird Day 2023 was celebrated on the 13th of May with a strong focus on the theme, water and its importance for migratory birds. This annual event serves as a platform to advocate for the conservation of migratory birds and their habitats, emphasizing the significance of water ecosystems for these avian travelers. Secretary, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy emphasizes the role of bioenergy in energy transition. Coal Ministry invites proposals for research and development in coal sector, latest by the 15th of July 2023. The Wildlife Protection Act 1972 serves as the legal foundation for safeguarding various species of wild animals, managing their habitats, and regulating the trade of products derived from them. The Act underwent its latest amendment in 2022. The amendment became effective from April 1, 2023. 
According to Section 49N of the Act, Individuals involved in captive breeding or artificial propagation of any listed species mentioned in Appendix 1 of Schedule 4 are required to submit a license application within 90 days from the commencement of the Wildlife Protection Amendment Act 2022. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has released the rules under Section 49N through a Gazette notification dated April 24, 2023. These rules can also be accessed on the Ministry's website. Consultants facing payment issues in a legal matter.